Is this live now? I'm How do we know when it's live? There's a is rule. Live? It's live. We do How not do we talk yeah. while the intro is playing. The intro. Yeah. You can't. You cut off my mic. No bark. That's not my dogs for the yeah. first time. I think someone just stole a package off my porch. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if someone put one there or they took it because I just saw a package leave the porch area. So I don't oh. know if that's how the UPS works. You need more rubber glitter bombs. Yeah, <laughs> and a fart spray. By the way, that that was the most over-engineered prank I've ever seen. <laughs> what? And I watched it. What are you talking about? Jeff, do you have the internet? Yeah. <laughs> what, there was only one sparkle prank or whatever? Glitter Just prank? Two people, two random people that never talk about shit know that there was a glitter bomb prank on the internet. Where yeah, that's what I'm it. saying. I thought I thought there was a numerous ones. You guys are talking like there was one and it was watchable. Yeah, there was one. <laughs> <laughs> Got like six million views. But hey, Jeff, Canadian. They don't count Canadian views. It's like a different. Uh, Jeff, thanks for sending me the link to peanut butter jelly time, which I've never seen before. Thank you for that. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Did you look up Tub Girl? No, I don't remember. No, I. No one looked that up. No. Okay. Probably no, I, didn't. I don't even know if it's still on the internet. It's probably gone. Hey, so. Nothing um, leaves the internet. Uh, you know, I think we'd like make an intro or something, but it's usually just us talking about random shit that and really drawing people in. Come on in. Yeah. Come here and talk with us about you don't even know what we're talking about. Yeah. We just, yeah. I don't know why we do that. Because <laughs> we don't have an intro. Welcome to uh, Babel. That's the freaking yeah. intro because the title. Well, we do have an intro. We are just we, babbling. And we sometimes we talk about RC and he just uh, finished his two new kits. Congrats uh, there, Pete. Uh, so a little prep on the show, uh, those who are with us live and will be with us not live, this is not a Q&A show, this isn't a peep show, although if you tip, Jeff will probably get a new hat, uh, as you can see, as a blue one. I got my Amazon delivered, as they promised. Just in time for summer. Um, yeah. And that's about it. Uh, it's probably his last show, that's another running joke, and reverse should be in racing, that's, I'll, it'll foreshadow our argument at the end. Is there a prize today? Is there, is there? We do have a prize. It's going to change because I had a little uh, scheduling thing where someone, uh, Jim from Tekken, wanted to wait until he could announce his new products. Uh, so it wasn't this week. So I can't give away the Tekken prize pack that we promised last week. But we do have something new. Mm. And uh, I don't know why we're looking at Tony's horse. But uh, <laughs> the good news is, let me find the picture here. We are giving away... Today's sponsor is not Element, but because I don't have a team associated hat, is the closest thing I have. Mm. We're giving away a clown nose and a hockey puck. With free RC cars. Uh, oh, and it comes with RC cars. Yeah. So it's the team associated nano. Pete? Nano sport? Nano sport. Yeah. RCR yeah. kit. And you get two. Uh, I don't know what that video game is called. Anybody? There's a video game. I don't even know what's going, after, on. I don't what's going on. It's called no. like Smash Cars or something. There's some video game where it's like soccer, but you play with cars. It's very popular online uh, mm -hmm. with all the kids. Yeah, well, this is real. Yes. So you get a little prize pack and a clown nose and a hockey puck. But uh, it's worth more than a dollar. I think it's like 200 bucks for the set. And it's actually, I mean, you can set it up. It's like air hockey, but RC. All right. I'm kind of into that. Yeah. Jeff, give me your one word answer. And you can also yeah, no, that sounds awesome. That sounds you don't good. have to do the whole hockey puck thing. I, you said what? No, you, you don't do the whole hockey puck thing. They're, you got two of them. They're fun to race each other in the house. I mean, uh, they will go up and down a hallway pretty damn quick. It's a good right. time. Yes. So whatever. It's RC and it's free. And all you have to do is the same stuff. You did last week, which means you have. Do we have a new issue? Did you put a new issue? I did not put a new issue. I'm sticking to the. I'm not giving my stuff away for free. The idea is to buy the dumb thing. That's what I'm really doing. But yeah, that's in order right. to enter, that's right. yeah, uh, you just have to. That's the invite link that would have invited everybody to join us. That would have been interesting. Uh, is this working on YouTube this week? I guess we're getting YouTube comments. So I, guess that's uh, I was smart enough. Thank you, YouTube viewers, because last week I did not click the YouTube button, so you got the rerun only. I didn't know that. But uh, 
the link is there it is so if you go to that click download you are entered to win the hockey puck clown nose combo uh it just said error i don't know which one that's on looks like on facebook i don't know what's going on but there's a link i'll post it a couple times uh automatic entry download if you could just uh, make a comment about team associated and, and tag them or something in our posts so this way they see that we babbled more about them and so did you so and, and you know we're cool because it's payloads with a z yeah that was before <laughs> s's were popular <laughs> jeff is in like uh 320 dpi this week with his blue is, hat. It, is it bad again you're like uh, bigfoot you're blurry I have a new microphone on, as someone told me I should get a new microphone, so I did. Pete? No. I haven't got a microphone yet. I'm going to send mm -hmm. one to you. Pete, if you download the link, you will win a free microphone. Actually, I got a uh, hoodie microphone. <laughs> yeah. The best part about this microphone is Derek pays for them. So yeah. that's I'm going to go shopping for more computer stuff this week. Did I pay for that one? Well, you're going to. <laughs> so. didn't, you, didn't you read my text? You I have didn't. to buy me a microphone. No. And you said... You said yes, so there you go. That's a contract. It's worth it. We make thirty-eight cents an episode, so at, a, at yeah. about one thousand of these shows, then a microphone's paid for. One is paid back. You know, I it's heard that asset. if I broadcast from a PS Five, it'll sound awesome. But we can talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got some topics. We're not completely babbling, but we're just uh, babbling. Um, we didn't like the topics this week, but no one came up with any different ones. So, what is Mark talking about with Team Associated no longer in operation? What is he talking about? Uh, I don't know. We're not supposed to read the comments. Don't read comments. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I think someone mentioned that last week. I don't know if it was the same guy. A late breaking news: Team Associated is out of business. I don't think so. Yeah, uh, that's. What I don't. That's. I don't know. That's an odd statement. All yeah. those stranger things that happen. That's not one of them. But uh, they are. They do make an element here too. That's their brand. But thank you for the hat, Brad. But um, so let's go into a little bit of some topics here. So uh, the first one we're going to talk about. And someone mentioned this, which is weird. I think that means they're looking at us because mentioned computer radios. And I'm going to start with how much I hate computer radios. What is that statement to me? <laughs> I hate them. Why? What does that even mean? I don't. I think we've gone to the far end of things on ra computer radios that how many, let's be real. How many functions on a computer radio do you use? I think what? three. Three. Yeah. Okay. But they're very important, those three. And, and if you don't use any of the other ones, they're, it's, they do nothing. They're just there. Well, they, they all def they all default to zero. That's my no, point. But, but, but it's it, it well because I guess it's there's space is cheap now and you can put all the bells and whistles in it for nothing. And if one guy out of a thousand uses it, then that one guy's happy and it doesn't. Why not? But it, it, it's all just zeroed out. It's all just it all defaults to zero. Brought props. <laughs> I care more about the the actual feel of the radio than I do the three controls I use because I use EPA. Yeah. Uh, dual rate. Trim. No, I don't mm. really use dual rate. I set that yeah. to, you know, end point, which we'll talk about. And I use sometimes when I remember that I have more than one model memory instead of just screwing with it to make the one I'm using work. Sometimes I use a model memory. Yeah. Well, digital trims are huge. That's it's that's the it's the big most important. Remember oh, when it used to be a dial? Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can while you're driving, if your car is not straight, you can just reach your finger up and and tap the digital trim the, the computer radios i mean i don't even this is I mean, computer radios are you can have a digital now. trim without having a screen on the radio let me tell you my dream radio okay uh, all right batteries low i haven't used that in a while so i was gonna i was gonna go over how many dumb uh options are on this um and i just timer's saw useful one. if you want a time i there's all kinds of there's all kinds of things that are that are good have you going, yeah. timer on your radio yeah i i did because i because uh at the last class i was racing Tire wear was brutal. Like you, the, the the tires were not that good for the first five or eight minutes, and then so they were the really guy, good. the guy running the race never said uh, one minute to go or anything. No, like not that. in the race. Not in the race. Let me finish. Not not during the race. I've never used a timer. No, but for but we, you'd want to break in your tire to a certain level for the for Q one and 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 so that it's good drivable in Q one, but also a good enough tire to to run the main with. So I'd I'd only want to put say you know four minutes aside, four minutes rotate, then four minutes. 
and then get ready for the race. So yeah, I would, I would use my timer during practice when I'm, when I'm breaking in new tires and, and whatnot. Yeah, sure. It, here's all the radio I need. And I think anyone needs, um, uh, like Derek said, make it feel great. Get the case designed Well, have a nice ball bearing on the uh, trigger and wheel, all that stuff. So it feels great. Um, I think the essential functions that are on the Magnum junior and the model below the caliper three P where it's just knobs, there was no screen. That was all you ever really needed to work. Digital trims are great. I think if you can click, click, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. For lessons, but it doesn't need to be on a screen. And if you do want a screen, just make it connectable via Bluetooth. It doesn't have to be built into the radio. Uh oh, and I know what's coming here. What's Traxxas. <laughs> Traxxas. Other radios hey, hey, I'm other not in bed with Traxxas, but. <laughs> other radios do too. But another thing that Traxxas does, they don't have model memory that you mess with unless you want to use the app. You can take your TQI radio, hook it up to, you know, 17 different Traxxas cars. You never have to select a car. You just turn on the car you want to drive, turn on the radio. The radio says, oh, yeah, that's your TRX4. Cool. Oh. And it puts in the right, right stuff. You never have to go select anything. I probably cool. never knew how to program a Traxxas radio in my life. Yeah, the, try and follow that stupid chart that they no, have. but you can use your phone really? button if it just knows the, the receiver. But I, every car I have is uh, comes with a radio, so it's never I have more than one. Traxxas. And that's the other thing. If you, if you want to have multi models, it has to be computer. What's that? If you want to have multi models, it has to be computer. It can't be an analog dial for it to memorize settings. It has to be all digital. And and multi model memory is awesome. Uh, it's that's another feature that I use. I like it too, and, and that's why uh, Traxxas has that multi function knob, so you can assign to different things. Because yeah, you can't have analog and digital coexist if you're going to have that instant model memory. Yeah, that's right. Right. But, but that so is all, a great. All my radios problem. are going to do because I haven't actually run these in a while. But I'm trying to go through the stuff that doesn't make sense. So the one that keeps popping up, especially on a lot of them, because I remember when this feature came out, I think it was like uh, Airtronics may have had the first one. ABS. Yeah, oh, stupid. Yeah, that's still on a radio. How? Yeah, well, Why? right. Yeah. Well, the servos these days could probably actually do something. The servos weren't quick enough, saying a nitro sense. The servos weren't quick enough to to, well, to here's you know how ABS works, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it was sensors and whatnot that you no, and I get it. But the, the ABS on a radio is basic where it just pulses the uh yeah, where it just pulses the brakes. Yeah, no, I mean I, I, I don't I don't think anyone's gonna argue that there's a whole bunch of silliness in there. But well, but there's I, I just look at some of these new radios, so and I don't mean to pick on spectrum because I I actually like some of the radios. They had the internet on there. Why? <laughs> yeah, I mean Sometimes first of all Google shit. Yeah, because I nobody has a phone on them at this point. Yeah, if, well, I wasn't being five hundred dollar radio. I'm thinking you have some sort. You're not on your flip phone, you know. So, I, I I I did the review of that X. What is the X four? Not the X four. What is that? The Lynx. I did a the the product review in the magazine of two years ago or whatever. Yeah, that doesn't happen. I referenced well. I referenced that it plays music, and then you made fun of me in the in the sidebars <laughs> about okay. so your phone and everything else. So it's true. Any high end radio I've had, um, I have always. Uh, a big plus for me is if I can quickly access the stuff that you work on all that you use all the time. And that's intuitive yeah. to use. Cause I'm never going to yeah. go in and like, I appreciate the, the technology and the, and the, the uh, creativity it takes to conceptualize the idea of setting up my servo so that it has four different rates of speed, depending where it is in the, in the throw, like, wow, <laughs> man, but I'll never ever use that. That's not gonna. No, happen. of course, yeah. nobody will ever use that. And the, and the, the fact it's that I can go into ABS and change not only the frequency of how quickly it pulses, but how deep each pulse is, and at which point, at which point in the trigger throw it turns on the. Wow, man, you guys really thought that through. I'm never gonna touch it. You know, I just want to be able to yeah. set my endpoints. I, I I think dual rate is handy if you just like on the fly, like, well, I've got way too much steering stuff got slippery, and it's gonna turn everything back for a second. I think that's great. Um, oh, but, Jeff started into the whole rant of the world. No, I, listen, I wrote a, an article on that. Peter wrote, read it, I'm sure. I, I, I made my points. I mean, I, I even I even concede in the article that, listen, dual rate's not that bad. But, yeah, I'm not a fan of dual rate. No, that's right. Yeah. I, 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 I'm a fan of dual rate just for driving around. Because if I have all kinds of traction in the street, and then I go to the baseball diamond, and it's super yeah. loose. I'll just knock out some steering with a big whack of dual rays. Yeah, not, you're not going to go back and start changing you know, pistons and oil and spring to. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. That's right. Yeah. And for a budget radio that does not have endpoints, dual rates can be your endpoints, and that's better than grinding the servo up by having yeah, a. How many buttons, buttons you have to button right now? Well, no, dual rate and endpoint are two different things, but they, they're similar. But they're two different. You, you, one that won't replace the other. Are you three buttons on that shirt, or how many you got? Are you talking to me? Yeah, I was just checking how deep your V was going, you know. It's oh, oh, how many buttons do I not have done? Yeah. Just really two, but really one because nobody does that top one. I keep my neck's too big for the top one. 
Yeah, there are sport radios that don't have endpoint adjustment, but do have dual rate, and dual rate is what you use to prevent yourself from grinding up your servo by banging. Of course, it. of course. But if you have both, you wouldn't use them oh, uh, interchangeably. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, they, they do. They yeah, do you put the endpoints first, and then your dual rates. If you want to, like, I need to take some out without readjusting. That's right. Yeah, just, because your endpoints are never going to be eighty-seven percent, eighty-seven percent from left to right. They're going to be two different numbers always. Of course. I, yeah. I mean, I don't think I've ever built a car. Or the hundreds and hundreds of builds where the endpoints were the same percentage each way, and in, and obviously in dual rate, that's that's how it works. Yeah. So yeah, you, think, if you have car, when you're the servo saver was in the center, is the closest you'll ever be to equal left right. Yeah, but the servo saver in the center still doesn't tell you what what spline you're going to drop that servo saver onto. There's always going to be there's always going to be some the golden one that would happen on is that for me. Yeah, right. And sure. now we're going to get into sub trim, and wow, no one's listening. <laughs> sub trim is amazing. Sub trips well, another one. King, King Fisher guy says over the air firmware updates, but I have you ever updated your radio for some reason? No, I don't. I don't. When the radio makes me. Well, so yeah. So here's the thing: is that all this development to ABS that never you everyone on there is a cost factor that I'm like, stop it. It doesn't make any sense. I I will use the word hate. I think they're dumb. And not, yeah, but there is no cost factor at this point. Once it's developed, it's it's pennies. It's it's nothing. It's it's free at that point. To, to yeah, put it on to, I think that seven hundred dollar radio is free. Yeah. No, but you're not it, part. A component of that seven hundred dollar radio wasn't the programming for ABS anymore. That was developed twenty years ago. Is is what would be my argument? Exactly. It doesn't work. Well, the market knows <laughs> that they want these things, so that's why they exist. But I, I'm with you, Derek. I would love it if there was a radio that was like, we don't have all the stuff you don't use. The stuff you touch and feel is super ultra top quality, and it does have uh, easy access to the stuff that you do use all the time. Because I, I remember vividly. Calling this is how old it, how long this was. Uh, talking to Kinwald, Rick Howard, um, Matt Francis, and one other dude for an article about like computer radio, the computer radio guide and everything. And I wanted to ask them like, what do you use? like? What features do you use all the time? And they were like, I don't use anything. I, I set up my trip, my endpoints, and then that's it. I think Rick Howard was like, sometimes a little bit of expo, and like those, those guys didn't touch anything. You know, they just yeah. drove the car. Yeah, that's right. I, like I, agree. I was going to see how long that awkward yeah. silence was going to go. I like having a nice radio. Here's a Futaba, the last uh, four, whatever. Uh, this is great. I <laughs> wish, so if I was going to build a radio, uh, KO had the right thing where it was kind of like pieced together, but it was one of the weirdest radios ever. Uh, yeah. but I would, I would yeah. like to be able to upgrade or change or fix things that break, like the stupid, you know, trigger. Uh, well, it's not just break. It, I, I ran KO for the first time uh, in Mini-Z uh, uh, before... before a bunch of new stuff has come out over the last I'm trying to not laugh I, knew, I don't know why you guys didn't laugh sooner. Uh, <laughs> KO was was uh, one of the main radios for Mini Z, especially with the Kyosho based boards. Well, anyway, I don't need to get into all those details. I got a KO radio many years ago, my first one, or at least my first one since a long ago, like when they had the the like Mars maybe or something. I don't know. Anyways, uh, it was awesome. It was overwhelming because everything was so adjustable. The, the wheel is on a ball. The trigger's on a ball. You can adjust the thickness of the trigger, so yep. how much dead band your finger has. Uh, I almost didn't know what it, and I even bought a bunch of carbon fiber parts and upgrades and different rubbers. I, I'll admit, it was fun, and, and I've, I very much enjoy the feel of the radio. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to listen to that for my dumb comment. <laughs> okay, I'll listen back. You said rubbers, uh, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's really not hard to figure out. Yeah, yeah I, right. okay, right. I anyway, yeah, to... I, I like some of these really highly adjustable radios. Again, it's overwhelming because you do I do I want the trigger at this angle or that angle? I don't even know. I've never had an adjustable trigger or, or an adjustable wheel. So, but so once I got it, I mean, I I love the feel. It's 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 great. That's where I want my money put. I'm not I'm not bagging on computer radios. I just feel like at this point, I should be putting more. If I buy a seven hundred dollar radio at this point, it should feel like seven hundred bucks. And a lot of these new radios are actually kind of cheap feeling. They just have a, a color screen, which I can care less about. Make the battery last, uh, vibrate when the battery's going dead, not 30 seconds before it does like all the life. Yeah, packs. I mean, some really. of these things are neat. Some of these things are neat. And and also, this is what I tell customers in the store when they get overwhelmed with, with having too much adjustability and ABS and all this other crap that they're not going to use. Don't If you don't touch it, it's not there. If you don't if you don't go to that function, it's at zero. So there's no... There's no yeah, I, I can appreciate that, that, that you have extra shit to scroll through. 
and and that could be a, a pain. But th the reality is, is don't be afraid because you you just don't use it. And listen, you might get into a class one day where you do. Like a, a, I don't even remember what a dig does, but uh, I mean, if your radio does dig or something, then when you get into crawling, you might want that where you don't care now. So I, I don't think there's any negative to to uh, to this stuff. <laughs> Still funny. I don't know. Try, I, we, I'll make another one at some point. Um, yeah. I'm going to go in a little bit because we do do a magazine for everybody that doesn't know. And the free link is in the chat here. Again, just download it to enter. Sorry. Download to enter to win the uh, Team Associate Hockey Puck Nose uh, Nano Racer. That somehow I took off here. Um, just do that. But we do do make a magazine. And one of the article that I just did that... Uh, Holding up this issue a little bit. Uh, see you, Jeff. Uh, was, <laughs> I had to blow my nose, so. <laughs> and, and I don't know if we, we talked about this, is that there's a bunch of things that when you buy an RTR, uh, you should do before you even run it, which I don't. And this is why I do the articles, because you just go out there and go run it, and then you run into a bunch of problems. So I thought it was a pretty interesting article to talk about, about things in, in that come out of the box that are issues that aren't checked that should be. So I will start and see if you guys can guess. Issues that are, are you're not talking about a specific part or upgrade, you're talking about things that they haven't done right in the like build? You should, when you pull any RTR out of the box, there's, I think I came up with nine, nine or ten things that you should check before you run it. Thanks, Tebow. And then uh, I'm going to tell you what one of them was, an easy one because I had this happen. And these are all a lot of personal experiences. Check the glue on the tires. Because I had tires fall off within four minutes. Tire off the rim or, or, or rim off the axle? Uh, glue on the, uh, they're not, they weren't glued properly. So right. either they had a bad day and forgot to glue half the wheel or didn't put enough on. But I went through the list of things. So the challenge is can you list some of these things that I thought of? Are we on the same page or am I just going to? Yeah. You talking to us? Or the comments <laughs> or whatever? You want us to guess what your article is? I mean, All they right. could guess. I'm going to look at it. But I, we read your comments. We, I'm just not going to chop up our conversation to look at it. There'll be something uh, like Servo Saver related. I'm sure well, you always bitch about Servo Savers. I'll say this much. Um Certainly, the RTR makers can make mistakes. You can get a, a kid that has a, a goof. But the sure. idea that, like, when you get your ready to run, don't drive until you check every screw. No one's going to do that. No. And you don't have to do that. No, of course not. Yeah. Right. No, but I'll, I'll tell you the issue. I'll tell you the reason. You're ready to run. I take out every screw. I take the whole kit apart. Put it back together. Make sure it's built right. No, you don't. No one does that. Yeah. No, but uh, the reason this article came up, because I had a bunch of stuff that went wrong on a bunch of kits that uh, – if I had just checked a certain thing. So a one which is very common is make sure the wheel nuts are on tight enough. Cause there's a yeah. joke even in the car business is that you don't want a car that was built on a Monday or a Friday. Yep. And that's probably holds true to uh, ready runs because someone's sitting in a factory all day and all they're doing is gluing circles and circles. And one time they sneeze and don't glue the circle, you have the one that didn't work. So uh, glue in the tires, tire nuts. Um, I don't know what Jeff's laughing at. Are you reading comments? <laughs> <What? laughs> what? Yeah. Oh my god! Good advice. Uh, the servo saver. There's about three things on the servo saver because I blew out a servo horn and stripped the servo gear. So you either have a servo saver that's too loose and the car doesn't steer, which is uh, you know I we can tell you how to check that. Um, you have a servo saver that's too tight and then you blow everything out which uh, ties into checking uh, endpoint because on the kit that also kind of caused problems, the, the, there was no, I don't think there was endpoint adjustment, so it was just dual rate. But if I turn left, it basically tried to break the steering knuckle off. And if I turn right, it didn't hit the knuckle. So obviously, as much as they want to dry set left and right, that was something because, again, these are all things that fit, made me it's more important to me because I'm shooting video and stupid pictures. So if they break in three minutes, <laughs> I can't imagine if I bought the car and that, you know, I know that something could break, but these simple things that like 
hey, do a quick, you know, a little how's your father car wash before uh, going out. Um, slipper was one because I actually broke a metal input shaft uh, on the rock racer because all the diffs are locked. And therefore, if you're going 30 miles an hour and bouncing through things, it's a little bit hard on things and it's snapped metal. So I'm guessing that the slipper that's on the car wasn't set. So we'll check the slipper. Um, you guys are really, really good at guessing. When uh, I say, are we supposed to be guessing still? You were doing a rant. We're, just, <laughs> let's let, we're all letting you go. Oh, you seem excited. Oh, about interrupted. Yeah, oh, are we still doing this? What else do you do on our chairs? Uh, King uh, Fisher got the pinion. Check your pinion. Check the gear mesh. These are I don't the agree with him. I don't agree with him on the thread lock. I don't like thread lock in pinion gears on on ten scale ever. Um, I suppose on a five mil shaft with a. Do you hate uh, thread lock? I, I I hate thread lock on one ten scale. Yeah, I, I don't. I think it's unnecessary. What is necessary is a pro wrench. Anyone who's ever going to install a pinion gear, you have to have a pro wrench. They're they're fifteen bucks for a set of three or four now, uh, uh, all the popular sizes. So there's no excuse anymore. Um, but uh, and in the bigger pinions, uh, thread lock is wise. But uh, in ten scale, uh, I have never found a, a need ever. Let's go back to servo savers real quick. In your lifetime. How many servo savers where the servo saver is integrated into the bell crank and you have a knurled nut on top of one side to adjust the preload on the spring to set how tight mm -hmm. the servo saver is? How many times has that been set up or designed so you can actually turn that knurled wheel with your fingers? Mm, uh, like one out of 10. I think there's a couple cars that I could do that with. And that's a big one because I would say in general, they're too loose, which causes a a huge problem and that kind of goes into uh geez, i don't want to go into the next topic because that was my number i'm gonna do it I'm doing it <laughs> so sir with the number one upgrade for me and i'm going to talk about ready to run and i actually did an article on this uh for extreme where i tested and ready to run and tried to get it to pro level by changing one part at a time in the single both most single most effective Bestest. change or the biggest change in lap time difference when we went from one to another was the stock servo saver to a glued servo saver. And it was sure. like seconds off the lap time, like a, like a holy shit kind of, mm -hmm. because the, sure. you're you know steering with a rubber band, it's impossible to drive. Yeah. So, and they'll run a softer servo saver on a beginner car, obviously to protect the servo more, especially yeah. because as I said, right off the bat, the best upgrade would be servo because often the RTR servo is weak. With, with plastic, <clears throat> excuse me, with plastic gears. So running well, no, them around an they, they, they used to be. Well, no, you'd be surprised. Even like Arma even had a, a servo problem in, in a few of their main vehicles for a little while. I think they have addressed it as, as you mentioned that many of them have, but no, I mean, that's still, now the thing is, 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 is you used to have to spend 150 bucks on a good metal gear, ball bearing, coreless, bionic, brushless, glow in the dark servo. But now you can get uh, the Chinese knockoff ones for, for next to nothing. And, and they actually work quite well. But you, you so, can get a really so, good name brand servo. Like a so high I'm not going to recommend servo. buying our Chinese knockoff brand. Sorry. Can you get a name brand? Yeah, no, no. I'm not saying to buy it. But when you, when, hobby because you can't spend If you're running an eight dollars. scale buggy with an hour long main or, or longer mains, then yeah, you definitely have to buy the, the high, high end servos. Servos blow up all the time and in a class like that. But for the average uh, uh, four wheel drive rustler guy, or, or I mean, even Traxxas has some pretty good servos. Pete, Pete's happy to hear that. Uh, if you have like a, a less expensive RTR, you don't need to spend a hundred dollars on, on a servo. You can get one of the knockoff ones in, in those situations and they work. Well, you can get a real high tech servo for right. Pete, and it will be a, you know, 200 ounce inch servo with metal gears. Yes. Okay. okay that's fair. But whatever. Well, we just did a servo article. So I think it's 40 bucks, right? What I just did a server article? IMG. No, I did, but I, I think that was oh, like a yeah. hundred. Yeah, I didn't do any articles, so the, yeah, I know. The, the, the high tech server <laughs> I'm thinking of the uh, um, it was like a hundred plus ounce inches, which is great for a ready to run upgrade. Um, sure, and that was like thirty bucks. But I didn't want to mention that because you're talking about like a 200, 300 ounce inch server. But but even those, you can get a name brand like a high tech and have it not be crazy expensive. No, I understand that. But whatever, and I'm not, and listen, I'm a huge high tech's my servo. That's the servos I use in, in all my race cars. Uh, I, I would never not recommend yeah. high tech, but, but whatever metric you're comparing, uh, even, <laughs> even, even the budget servos from high tech and a, a knockoff brand will have similar numbers and still be less money. But yeah, I mean, yeah. of course uh, the big brands do have, have a budget, 
servos with with big numbers as well. Of course, yeah. By the way, I'm gonna, the, the point I'm is, is back in the day there was no options. I'm going to call out. I'm going to call out servos now. Every servo is on check right now. There's no thousand ounce servos. They don't exist. Well, why would you want a thousand ounce servo? Well, the, all these numbers are like, oh, it can it lifts more than you bench press. Out, out yeah, servo, well, it doesn't. I bench press an awful lot, so yeah, we can talk about that. at least hundred ounces. But <laughs> but yeah, you know, all the numbers. All the numbers are out of control now. Yeah, All the numbers sure. are out of control. Um, we used to flip out over 120 ounce inches. Now that's a budget servo. So right, yeah. but back. But here's the thing: what I remember, maybe because I was younger and things, the servos today seem slow to me. When I had a race car and you, I used the wiggle test where you go. Ee, ee, you remember the thing that everybody <laughs> does before the race? Everybody would show how faster servo was. Hey, look how fast our servo yeah, is! Yeah. Crazy. They don't go that fast anymore. Well, I I I, I don't agree. First of all, we have a lot nobody of seven point four. Nobody does the servo, the servo dance anymore, so I don't think they're as fast as them. Well, no, they are. They're faster. The numbers are faster, and also we have a higher BEC voltages than we've ever had. How can you be faster than point oh eight? I mean, I mean, that's well. There not... are numbers that are faster than point oh eight. They're, they go down to point oh five, point oh four. I think even Ooh. some of them. It, it's some all again. It's ridiculous numbers. But but the, the, I'm going to argue that servos are not slower than they used to be. No, it's just not true. Uh, I think the numbers, like many things, are just like you know. Like how you say you're 25.4 millimeters long. Nobody knows what that means. <laughs> well, I do. I'm Canadian. I know metric very well. <laughs> hey, I'm doing a Canadian show. Someone recommended we do a trend translator. Yeah. Canadians yeah. know both imperial and metric, by the way. It's it's you boneheads that only know you're imperial. Yeah. Well, it's a that must be grouping 330 million people together. Yeah. Any Facebook group, you're going to see like, I just got a new XYZ. What's my first upgrade? What should it be? And people are like, servo. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. What it's going to be servo yeah and yeah get it i mean wait break the servo first you don't have to like i'm not going to drive it but yeah but you'll end up breaking it on a sunday when the shops close and you're in the middle of nowhere with all your buddies so i mean i i say that in the hobby shop when people buy a car like oh what's going to break i want to buy the spares well first i don't know you don't know what's going to break uh you know what should i upgrade well not always you buy a knuckle you're going to break the C hub, you buy the C hub, you're going to break the arm. You buy the arm, you're going to break the bulkhead. You, you never really know unless you buy you all the. You seem to know what's going to break. What's that? You seem to know what's going to break. I can give you a list of things that are that are potentially going to break. Yeah. Anyways, it's, and the other one is what? What do I upgrade? And and like Pete said, I often recommend just br break your way into it. Break when you break your arm, then buy the RPM arm, or or whatever uh, upgrade version you want. Breaking your way into into better cars is a great way of doing it, unless you're unless the part is so weak that it's going to fail at a time where it's a day ender. Then then you might want to get it ahead of time. Yeah, certainly there are car. Well, there used to be cars. I mean, this seems like it doesn't happen as much, but you know, back in the day where you would get a car uh, when the low Z triple X four first came out, like yeah, these things will break the front shock tower. Like if you look yeah. at it, so yeah, yeah every car is a weak point. Yeah. Savage uh, savage spur gears. Yeah, every uh, we used to joke about this. I didn't even well, mean, Derek was talking about a car right now. No, but uh, uh, right, it doesn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, the point is, is, this is like it, you and I used to have the same cars from twenty years ago. Hey, what well, don't get me started on that without you sending me updated stuff. But uh, it, it's funny because once you start driving a vehicle, within within a few hours, even less time, you'll you'll know the weak point of of your own vehicle, and and then you can start setting up preparations for, for that weak part that you've now learned about, or the hobby shop can, can address it. They, we know most of the weak points of each of the vehicles we sell as well. Yeah. Hey, ball cup, a arm, hinge pin, and you got, well, it depends on the, yeah, it depends on the car. Right. Pretty much every car. I mean, what, what, yeah, you well, you, yeah, you hit a couple of on cars. There's five parts. So you're going to say you're going to break unless it's something. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Nick, I, I, so, uh, this speaking of programming stuff, I've never programmed any programmable servo. So yeah, nor have I. Nor <laughs> so have I. I don't know. I don't I couldn't even tell you how to do that. I do like that Tekken Servo has no. Uh, you, it's centered wherever it starts. Uh, whatever how witchcraft. Oh, that's kind of neat. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah Tekken Servo can just go around and around and around if you want. Yeah, there's to. no physical endpoint. Oh, cool. So, but uh, I probably still couldn't do it. So. Yeah, I think well, this comes back to your computerized radio conversation. The, the, we, we've gotten a little out of control with some of these adjustments. But again, I, I, I think there's maybe crossover where, where someone could use it, like, say, in robotics or something, which are, are, is huge with yeah. servos now. Uh, so so some that we're like, yeah, why would you ever want that in an RC car? Well, some other guy may want it. Now, there is a little bit of, of humor to to a lot of this adjustability because as as a relatively 
skilled driver myself, if I'm not noticing the difference on some of these adjustments, then then 98% of the people out there wouldn't as well. So it does seem like a moot point that some of these aggressive adjustments. You're in the top 2% of drivers in the world? I don't Not including the pros, but I mean, I, I, okay, yeah, I should have known you were going to jump at my percentage. Yeah, if <laughs> 70% of the people aren't going to, whatever, however fast they am compared to the rest of the world. How, so how, maybe in mini Z, you're in the top 2%. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. We have Here, here's a question yeah. for you. Let's just assume you got the most perceptive pro driver racing right now, whoever that guy is. And you tell him like, okay, we're going to get your car out here. And every 10th lap, we're going to pull in your car. We might make an adjustment. We might make not, we might not, you'll never know, but you tell us if it feels like we did something. No, but that guy would know. The guy you just described would know. What's that? The guy you described would know the, 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 the Tebos and the, and the Cavalieri's and, and you know the, the really really good pro drivers they would they they notice everything. Know, but what's what's the threshold like if I'm like if I just give the turnbuckle a quarter turn and now he's got like a quarter degree more camber is he going to notice that and this, well, isn't okay. be, this isn't meant to be a diss like see they don't really I'm I'm just curious how yeah, yeah, yeah. he doesn't have to get before they would notice do you do you think if it was noticeable that level of driver would notice it but yeah if you're doing a quarter turn it it, it also depends on on the class of racing. Some classes of racing, yeah. a, a half a degree of camber makes a huge difference. Some yeah, I'm like carpet off road, which is very high grip. You should be able to definitely feel a difference when you change the car. Okay, let me start yeah, the, the the best guys would notice. Yes, I, I feel that most of the best guys would. Well, notice. I know they notice, but what do you think the threshold is between like I can't tell that you made a change because if I move that turnbuckle, literally the wrench moves a millimeter, they're not going to detect that. Like, well, of course it, not. Like, yeah, quarter, right. like that, that's like how much of a degree of camber would they notice? Is it ultra half like half a degree? Body, degree say. Half a degree, let's say. I mean, this is arbitrary, but let's say I, I'd say. Yeah, I'm just curious. Sure. So take, degree. away, take away the degrees part and, and what percentage of change is that? That's what you have to look at. So if you're at one degree and you right. do a half a degree, that's 50% change. That's a pretty high change. Well, not really. Well, that's, well, yeah, because yeah. The, 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 the amount of, of camber you can have that will even just plain work is narrow. Right. It's not like you'll get a 360 degree range. You've got. Like a what? A four degree range tops, two degrees each direction before the car gets really wonky. Well, yeah, from zero to minus three, three and a half, probably at best. Yeah, right. I yeah. would say a lot of things too is uh, after three laps, the change disappears. So we'll we'll go back to radios when we went to uh, Spectrum and it had all the lag issues. I don't mm -hmm. nobody talks about those anymore. But I lag is only it was only detectable if you went from something with no lag. Yeah, and immediately switched. But afterwards, all your turn points are just going to adjust to where that you're naturally going to do it with the lag. It no. wasn't like you turned then a half a second later it turned. It was just a, a tiny bit of of difference, and it wasn't I, when, like, when the first when the first batch of spectrums came out when they were just modules. Like you just you, it wasn't a whole system. You stuck a module in an, in an M8 or something. I was running 12 scale at the time, and uh, I was I was crashing silly crashes making silly mistakes all over the place and i had no i couldn't figure out what was going on i had no no freaking idea uh and i put all my old no this back when the novak switch i think the the, the where you could what do they call that where you could actually set the frequency yeah I, I put all my novak gear back in and 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 the car was perfect it was, it was awesome i couldn't detect the lag but it was making enough of it. when you drive long enough you you you're you're well point, you're, you gotta remember there's two there was two different problems with the original spectrum a lot of them one of them had packet drops where it was just losing data that's not lag. no this this would this that particular was like, oh, my last command was go straight and you're turning yeah, but no it. there was no missed commands there was nothing there was no input i was put in that i wasn't getting the input the, the, the vehicle was still driving all the, the the inputs were all there but it it, it must have been an, an undetectable lag that was and again you know if you're running a, a an inch off of your apex and 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 at at speed then a, a fraction of a second lag would make all the difference in the world that was the problem with vrc the software initially if you had a crappy computer it was lag but anyway I, that 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 was real when i put my novak gear back on the car was half half a second faster a lap and and uh and zero mistakes were being made so i mean i attribute that to to a lag i, I didn't do any further testing at the time do you think you would have recalibrated yourself if you just had if you had to use that equipment? No, like, no, I don't think so. No, I mean, yeah, maybe eventually, but what a terrible uh, thing to do to my my decades of, of driving would be to recalibrate to a to a lag. But yeah, I mean, but, uh, I mean, of course, yeah, I, I probably would have. But no, I mean, I, I was making mistakes because I was driving the way the car was supposed to be driving, not not not. No, yeah, I, I believe you. 
Yeah. Well, no, the way is you wanted it to drive before you changed it. It's just like any setup change, like you talked before. Is you yeah, for 20 years pr itself. prior to that, I drove without a lag, the, you know, the, is what I would assume. What's that? Back up. Oh, am I too close to my mic? Am I, am I too close to my new mic? Yeah, you were trying to, like, satisfy that thing. <laughs> well. <laughs> Anyway, that's my point. That's anyway. I agree. The leg. On the, to to Peter, Pete's point, I think there's a lot of things, and you know, I used to make a joke when I was good at racing a uh, long, long time ago. I had like five different bodies. Like when I worked at a hobby shop, I painted like eight bodies, and I swear the paint jobs made the car slower or faster. Well, the so weight of it definitely. No, it wasn't weight. They were the same body. I just made the joke that this. So the weight color, of the paint. If you have, if you put an extra, you could easily. No, colors are faster. Although Jason Rona has a. A good chart on, on which rims are faster, yellow or, or white. Uh, well, white is uh, my if name. you believe it, it's, it's placebo and racing too. So if you have no, no, I, I know. It, but it, there it, is it, a real component to the mass of a body. The body is the highest the mass on the car, and you can easily paint a, a body. I did an article on how to how to paint a body. Do you remember the article? I painted two bodies, two of the same bodies, one lightweight, one not. One was super thin paint, one was super light stickers. And, and I think I saved like an ounce and a half, which is huge, obviously. And then I took a picture of all the titanium and aluminum parts you would have had to buy to, to compensate for that extra ounce and a half that the heavier body had. So, so there's the component of, of what you can do to a paint job. Was it camo sticker? sticker? Well, camo was a very light paint job. I recommend that for almost anyone. But uh, there is a, a, a paint, the, the mass of, of paint, especially on a body, which is, I mean, again, on touring cars, they move the motor down a quarter millimeter. They drop the servo down a half a millimeter. Like CG is a huge thing, so a, a mass on the body is is a is a real conversation. Well, then but they move the, Derek, then they move the diff up and change everything, so it doesn't really matter. Well, but that's Derek, for different reasons, were, but yes, right. yeah, you're right, you're right. What you were trying to say though, Derek, was that a red body felt faster than a yellow one? Was that oh, right? I, I, to this day, I'll tell you, I had a green body that was way smoother than the other ones, and I'd hmm. let people try them. And but it's power suggestion. That's all I learned. That it's like sure. you can go in the, on the placebo and say, oh, I moved your tie rod. Uh, this much, and then they say, "Oh, I could feel the change." You know, uh, it's so inconsistent. I mean, think about off-road. I mean, how consistent can you be on a real off-road track to say that you can tell, uh, you know, a quarter of an ounce or I, I don't even know what ounces well, are. To be honest, I'll bet four if grams. I bet if you took the best, I, I'd say nothing. I'll bet if you took the ten best drivers and you did this thing where you said, "Look, after ten laps, I'm going to bring your car in. I might change something. I might not, and put you back out." I bet if you didn't touch the car, but you spent like five minutes not touching it, and of course they can't see you, some of those guys would psych themselves out and be convinced yeah. that the car felt different. Yeah. And that, again, that's not a diss against those drivers. I'm saying anyone, that's how anyone feels. Like if you, yeah, sure, sure. If you do any, if you like, oh, I, 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 I took my, my truck apart, I rebuilt it, or not rebuilt it, because that's going to make a difference. I, I got, you know, um, uh, carbon fiber shock towers. They're not going to change that car one bit in the street in front of your house. But you, you spend an hour putting them on there. You go out for a drive, and it's like when you're a kid. I can run fast in these sneakers. You know, it's the same thing. Oh, the car feels way better now with the carbon shock towers. You know, right? I post. I posted again. Just a reminder: today's uh, babble is babbling from Team Associated, and you're getting going to enter to win free Nano Sport clown nose hockey puck cars. You get two and one, so it's not just one. You don't have to find somebody else. So you can play a. Uh, uh, whatever that Smash video game is, can someone tell me what that stupid video game is where people play with the cars and soccer? I don't know what it is, but that's what it's based <laughs> off of. Look it up. It's it's Nano Sport, <laughs> not Nana Sport, which is a it's different Grandma thing. Sport. It yeah. could be her too, but uh, it's cool. Jo it's, you know, Joe's made a great uh, comment, by the way. Eighteen scale cars. Uh, click to enter the download. Free download enters you. We will announce the winner next week. Uh, the Tekken giveaway is rescheduled to when Jim, uh, I think he's scared. Jim, are you scared? Come on here and talk about What's nothing. Scared with us. Of? I know we don't really talk about anything. <laughs> uh, I hopefully he agrees with me about reverse and racing because he makes speed controls that go on reverse. And if it wasn't such a big deal, why they put reverse on racing speed controls? All right, save it for Jim Hot Rod. All right, let's. <laughs> you can you and Jim can hold hands and talk reverse all episode when he's on. Well, you guys are going to whale? Who the hell's doing a whaler's rant right now? <laughs> that's a buddy of mine, Mike. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the only hockey. That was my first hockey game. Um, yes, Mario Kart, not Mario Kart. Somebody Rocket League. There you go. Thank you. That's what it's called. I like Joe's uh, comment about me talking about weight on a body. <laughs> he didn't notice it there. 
Oh, yeah. it, you, want me, you want me to highlight it for you? Sure, he's calling me a woman, which is fine. Women are great. I'm fine with that. I am sure all the mini Z bodies are as lightweight as they can be. So, yeah, well, so in mini Z, the, the one of the advantages of the class is is the realism, and and they have those the true scale bodies where they they're, they're phenomenal, like they're they're hard plastic. Anyway, there's a there's a bit of a controversy because there's also polycarbonate bodies which are far lighter and, and far better performing. What is that? That's associated, isn't it? Yeah, it's video, video. I guess there's going to be a lot of intro on this video. I just want to see the carbon. They're heavy into intro on there. Some dude on the computer. Dude. Oh, I thought that was the video. I was like, somebody's no, on the computer. computer. The story of how we wanted to play a game one day, and then everybody <laughs> got together. And I just want to see the cards go. There you go. Wow. That looks fun. Oh, it is fun when you're with doing with somebody else, you know. Well, you got a crowd of people cheering you on. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, it but comes it, with a crowd of people. That's the whole it, point. It, it, yeah, in the box, you get the. If there was enough in there, it it'd be fun. Includes Cliff Bet, Sean Island. Yeah, <laughs> action figures do walk and talk, and he lost. That that guy got fired. That was that's what the stakes were. He he got fired that day. He lost the race. They need to put it, so this would be more fun if you put some money on the table. So it's like five bucks a score, and then uh, you, everything's more interesting. Flip was pointing, saying, "Get out! You're fired. You lost. Go back to work." <laughs> uh, all those people got fired that day. Just TJ made it. <laughs> no, <Nope>, he's out. <laughs> uh, and you can do obviously do that with the full size cars as well. But uh, anyway, you should. It's enter to win. It's worth at least 200 bucks, I think. Uh, they're going to ship it to you, so I don't have to. That's nice. Thank you. And um, so enter, click, enter. Download the magazine. Buy the magazine. We talk about this every week. It's $10. If you're dumb, you pay 15 for the app, and then you don't get all the back issues. So just buy. I'm being honest with you. We have two words. And Garrick makes less money. We have to always We have to say that. Hey, don't buy one. I'm not, I'm not in business to make. Someone else makes more money than me. That's it's great. You just put it on the app and they make more money. Great. You drop 10 bucks to subscribe. You get the latest issue plus all the back issues, right? As PDFs. As PDFs. Yes. It's worth it. Uh, except it for, except for the specials. I have to uh, put a little asterisk X. I can't even say that word star in there. Uh, you don't get the special issues, but you do because all the special issue is, is the <laughs> articles from every other issue. I've had to answer that to people where they're like, yeah. I didn't get issue 36 and this. I'm like, you did you just, if you read it, it's only available to subscribers when it was released, and then that it's a special issue if you wanted to buy that itself. So, again, this is all set up to sucker you into subscribing for 10 bucks. Let's be real. I'm not trying to uh, – it's $10 to subscribe. It's $15 for one back issue. It's $2.99. Just subscribe. I got, I got my so hot from streaming. I got 10 bucks at Sonic like it was nothing. I mean, the, the idea Sonic. that – Sonic. You get nerds really in your drink for $10. Sonic has nerd drinks. Yeah, and the slushies you can put nerds in your uh, sour apple slushie with nerds. Yeah, that actually does sound kind of good. <laughs> Only and reason kids who bring you the food and the heat, they work their butts off. Give them a tip. Give the Sonic guy a tip. Is that what you just said? Yes. Oh, we don't have Sonics here, so I don't. I, and he doesn't tip. I, my well, no, I'm a big tipper. I, I, I I'm a huge tipper. Whenever when I go to restaurants, tips or American, do you tip like, in Canadian or? Well, I tip in Canadian when I'm at, when I'm using the Canadian currency. Yes, I don't give them greenbacks when when I'm at a Canadian outfit. No. You know what bugs me at Sonic? At Sonic, you can't put the tip on the bill. It has to be in cash, and no oh, one really? ever cash. Those kids just get boned all day. <laughs> Metaphorically. Sounds like I want to work at Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends who's boning you, but yeah, oh, right. I, there was a clear. Yeah, the clarification is it has to yeah. be the right one there. Yeah, but hey. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. It's the boning. Yeah. This this uh this show's gone off the rails in the last five minutes a little bit. Uh, yeah. What is there another real topic or are we? Yeah, is there another? Yeah, we got one more topic and let's wrap this crap up. You want to talk about favorite things, maybe? Sure. Actually, Vanilla, it, you bring one beer. You're having a beer. I'm having a screwdriver. <laughs> All right. This is Pete's. Uh, I don't have any prop for this, so he's the only one that brought. Oh prop. yeah, I forgot about this. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I don't trying to read Pete. It's probably easier for you to tell me what it was. No, I, I thought a good topic would be if we talk about our favorite things uh, in the RC realm. Like for example, I love a Tamiya number two Phillips screwdriver. It's like the greatest screwdriver ever. Um, I like how you have one in the package still. Yeah. It, well, no, I, I finally wore mine out after fifteen years, so I bought a new one. Um, oh, okay. Like. 
this is the best screwdriver in the world. It's like eight dollars. Like you're like, why would you not have one of these? If, especially that's a good deal for a Japanese screwdriver. Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, also, these things. Why, why would Japanese screwdrivers be more expensive? I mean, everything screwdriver. in Japan is more expensive. What are you talking about? Their labor is, is more, expensive. more expensive in Japan. Is what more expensive? Oh, I don't. I can't speak to that. What is that? This is a Sears AccuCut. Um, you can also get it's. It's an anvil cutter. It's the, the type of a tool. What the hell are you cutting with those? Yeah. What is that for? This is the ultimate tool for cutting down a body post, because it cuts oh, it perfectly flat, and you have it doesn't pinch it like side cutters do. It looks factory when you're done. By the way, the only body post you're it's cutting. Seems overkill. Like, it's a rant right here. <laughs> I mean, it's the only company that has 22 foot body posts for their you, that nobody cuts. <laughs> You cut one body post with this, and you'll, you'll cut body posts for fun. It's so awesome. That's that's how great it is. Also, right. it cuts rope and garden hose like nothing, so that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm not even sure who you're killing right now with the rope and body posts. What is that? Remember yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one for sure. Remember yeah. when shock pliers didn't exist? Oh, yeah. they just wire cutters. Well, that's the wire cutters that you. I, I have a set of needle nose pliers. You know the the wire cutters on the needle nose pliers. Yeah. I used them so so long that, wow. uh, yeah. There's a, there. I had a shock shaft grabber in in that just from years and years of wearing that that half moon yeah. into the. Duratrack yeah. once had a pair of needle nose pliers where not by design, but it had like a a male nub and a female part that would fit into in the in the gripping part, and it would fit a shock shaft perfectly, and it wouldn't slip. But that was by accident. But these things, which everyone has seen and the other brands make them, but what a huge difference in like your kit building life when you can hold a shock shaft easily. And this little part, the little pin that pushes out the uh, ball in a uh, rod end, awesome. Yeah. You know, fantastic. Thank you. Great. Agreed. Well, you have to have a hole in them. What? what? Huh? Well, yeah, it'd have to be a non captured, like whatever you call it, where, the, where it's not cuffed oh. up. Yeah, yeah, not for a ball cut, but a, a, a rod end where it's. it's they, over most of them aren't captured, I think, these days, anyways, because a lot of them, they use the ball studs. To, instead of popping the ball end on and off, you just use your two mil wrench to, to yeah. pull the stud out to make world center changes. We'll wrap it around full circle to Derek's computer radio conversation, but I've always loved whatever the second or third model under the top of the line Futaba radio is because these things are always a good value. They've got everything you could ever want to do with a raise with a, a good Less computer radio. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So the the I think Futaba really does the best sport radios. It's like the Android of uh, radios. Sort of does everything. The comments right. are on point tonight, huh? Joe's Joe's on it tonight. But what what are some of your favorite things? Yeah, guys? I, Alexan scissors. That's all I got. I, I think Alexan scissors <laughs> are the greatest thing ever invented. You have two pairs. I'm actually writing a tip yeah. about that. One for wires and one from actual Alexan. Was that one for uh, like a utility uh, pair That's and it. one for Alexan? Yeah. You said it. Yeah. One. Well, I I call them tire scissors, but one one of my Alexan scissors are are never touched on anything, but tires or, or whatever so they're always super sharp and then yeah I, I cut piano wire and whatever you want with your other pair yeah hey, they're amazing here's a question for you what item is most likely to be missing from your rc shop uh at the hands of your child wife or girlfriend nothing they're not taking your tape and your scissors all the time no i have scissors all over the house, littered. This whole house is filled with scissors. Yeah, Jeff made Lexan bodies. Sick of not having Jeff made Lexan bodies at some point. He's got to cut all those skulls out and put them around his house. <laughs> yeah. do, you still, do you still have those bodies or no? Uh, I, 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 have a, I have a few. Yeah, I have a few. Yeah. No, I, I have those in there. <laughs> that was a... That was a big failure of a product. That was a good idea, to be honest with you. But it yeah. was a good idea. It was not executed right. Yeah, it, it was actually a, a, a great idea. It would have been your face popping out of it, which would have been frightening. There, if I were to do that project again, for those that don't know, we made a... a, 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 a Nobody team knows. How many did you sell? <laughs> I, I sold a few thousand. Oh, but right. I probably, a few thousand people we know. I probably, at, at best, broke even on the project. I spent a lot of money on the mold and other things. Anyway, yeah, I had a body with a, a skull molded on the hood, and again, neat idea, but we didn't, <laughs> we did not execute well on that one. Uh, uh, I would say an exacto, a sharp exacto, was like a gold. Oh, uh, a new blade. Yeah, yeah only because yeah. I read Omar put put a uh, scoring, but cutting out bodies scoring is like the hardest thing in the world. I oh, I hate hate, hate but, yeah, hate cutting uh, score. You got a yeah, long yeah. straight line, awesome. But everything else, no. You got to not even awesome. that. You, you, I would rather have sharp scissors. You need straight scissors yeah. for that. You know, so well, no, I I cut my straight lines with curved lexan scissors as well. Um, yeah, yeah, you can. It's not as yeah. easy. But I mean, the score the scoring bend method is fine. It, it it works fine. 
it gives very little room for error. If you slip at all, that score is there. And even if you don't bend and crack it in your uh, at your pit table, you'll bend and crack it on the track. So you, you, there's very little room for error with the score score and bend method. The Lexan and scissors, you have you have absolute um, authority and control with them. It's a lot safer method, I, I think. And then, of course, you you I like to go through with a Dremel and a sandy drum and clean up just a couple little j jagged areas. I, I, I always run rounded corners and wheel wells instead of the sharp ones so it doesn't dig into the tire. Little things like that. I mean, cutting score is fine, but yeah, there's there's some short shortcomings to it. Any, any other tools? To me, a wrench. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, that's... You have to have a spinning wrench always because there are better sockets, obviously, and with handles and whatnot. But there's lots of tight areas, and and you got all four of the sizes right there. To me, it, it's it's indispensable. You need it. I've got a great RC item that you can find at the dollar store, and it's also hours of fun. <laughs> the shit you have on your table, dude. No, this this is <laughs> great. Cleaning stuff off. I know you can buy specialized cleaning putty, but. Oh, the, the hoodie putty is amazing. This is stuff incredible. does the same job, and hoodie oh, no putty doesn't make fart noises. This does. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't know that. I, I still have my hoodie putty that 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 I bought twenty years ago, and and I ripped it in two, and I wore out the first one, but the second one's still going strong. I didn't know that that would be a replacement. That's that's a good idea. Yeah, it's but a dollar. Still, still, the stuff you have on your table on your desk blows my mind. So yeah, it's fun. I don't know if it's just because I only had one beer today or this is more entertaining. <laughs> What's <laughs> also, if, if you go to the Dollar Tree and get a tape measure, it has centimeters and millimeters on it, which you need. Yeah. Oh, don't show, don't show anybody what 25.4 means to Jeff's length. Yeah. Well, no, don't. Definitely don't if that's your length. <laughs> <laughs> only works in America. It's about an inch, so. <laughs> it's exactly an inch. Why you need that exact, uh, you don't even know, you know, because it's probably close to an inch. No, it's about an inch. It's 25 point, yeah, it's, it's, it's whatever. An inch. Is it exactly an inch? Yeah, okay, right, there you go. Yes. <laughs> Anybody still have one of these? Shock pump, okay, yeah, Tebow says shock pump. I'm less of a fan of shock pumps. I run emulsion shocks mostly, though, so. What, uh, what's that? It's a it's portable a DVD thing. player from back in the Stone Age. <laughs> Yeah, what, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. I still watch movies on it at my workbench. Yeah, well, you you carry DVDs with you? Well, Jeff, you made DVDs. No, you, he's <laughs> watching Triple X Main Two or whatever. And yeah, uh, well, if you're watching Triple X Main DVDs, then all the power. Yeah, I agree. I'll send you a set, Pete. Yeah. yeah at this point, you'd think you'd have the full one uploaded on your YouTube page for people to watch, but I guess that's me. Somewhere. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Well, I could. I the, licensing has. I, I'm one of the few people in, in the world who actually did licensing properly. I got all the bands. I've, I've licensed over 70 songs. I've got all the bands to sign off. None of that crap matters. Every time I put it on YouTube, they, they tell me you don't own the license and some other digital company takes all the, the money from it or they pull the video down or whatever. And I can send all my, all my release documents and they don't give a crap. So there's a reason why I don't upload the whole, the whole videos. I would, I, I have no problem with giving them away for free. I'm not selling them, but yeah, uh the uh, the picture glue how to that I brought back for Star Wars Day. Yes. Uh, how long did it take you to make that? Because that was fantastic. The video itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, just one day, but one full day. The hardest part about that video is 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 I was doing the the written article and the video at the same time, so I had to do the body, which is in it in and of itself somewhat difficult. I had to get a still sh shot, and I always take more than one still shot, of course, just to make sure, and That's get crazy. video of it. So, yeah, crazy. So, it was brutal. That was, but yeah, I know I did that in a day. Make was, more videos, that was great. Yeah, no, I, I, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it was fun, but it was tough. I did, I did it for Derek. He used Can to I yell tell you why, Jeff, why you don't have a lot of Jeff videos? I literally take as long as Triple uh, X Train Main, Triple X Main Monster Truck 2 to come out. Yeah, that took a while, didn't it? It, 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 it may have took him a day to film that. It probably took him three months to release it. I do, and the, uh, I usually I prepare house. a lot as well. Yeah, <laughs> because when you do one of those uh, something like that, you got to do it in one fell swoop. You're not, you can't do this in pieces. You got to when you go, you got to go. Especially yeah. when you set up all your lighting and 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 you want some consistency. That's how Derek became the video guy. Is uh, well, was, you do a different style of video. You, your I, your videos are brilliant. Uh, your your I, your review videos are brilliant, but they're very very different than a studio video. You know that. Oh, I know. That's why I don't do those ones. Because yeah, studio videos are brutal. They're very very difficult. An edited studio video is is 
is uh, any, anyway. I, I, again, I love your 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 method for reviews, especially that you do most of it on the phone, which is unbelievable. But yeah, I do have new. Uh, hey, this was a video that we brought up. Uh, I thought. So, I bought this original one. Fuck, I can't believe how dumb I am on this video of which left and right. Yeah, I get confused too. I never know what's up. So this Acaso one. I, normally, I bought these cheap GoPros because I strap them on a car or I stick them on the end of a, a PVC pipe and I smash them into the car. So I don't want anything expensive. Four years ago, the ones for like uh, fifty bucks were almost the quality of GoPro. And I'm not saying that GoPro is the best quality, but you really couldn't tell a difference, especially on your phone. Um, so it was time for a new one because my last one got too hot and shut off and it was, you know, so I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a new one as the crash camera. So I bought one and it was uh, 70 bucks, which was twice what I paid before. Uh, the video kind of was terrible and I wrote, wrote a review on Amazon and the company contacted me and said, uh, oh, we don't like your review. Can you change it? And I said, why that? Why would I change it? You know, because everybody wants five stars. I'm like, you know, I compared it to GoPro, which the Hero 8 is really good video and the stabilization is pretty sick, right? So they're like, well, what can we do? Can I send you a, the upgraded one? I said, well, I mean, I don't really want anything. I'm not trying to get anything for free. If you want to send me another camera, I'll look at it and I'll tell you what I think of it. So they sent it to me, this one, and uh, it's better than the other one. It's not a bad camera. It's 120 bucks on uh, Amazon. If you only got 120 bucks, it's not like I wouldn't tell you to buy it. The Hero Black is definitely still better video quality and the stabilization is, it, it, I did a video, it's on our YouTube page. Um, you can see the difference. If you can't, like I said, if you can't see the difference then save the money, but I can see the difference, especially on a bigger screen. So. If you're looking to shop these things, this was $399 and I traded in my broken smashed uh, GoPro that I didn't take my advice and I strapped that one to a car and it tumbled off on the dragster video. If you want to see it break, it's in that one. So this was only $299, this is $120. I would definitely save up and buy this one. Better quality, better video and the stabilization makes a giant difference. That's the number one thing I noticed. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's playing with the blue balls down at the bottom. Um, so that's probably the end of this because we're at an hour and two minutes, and I didn't think we were making it. I only had one beer prepared, which really bums me out. Yeah. Um, so with that said, uh, hopefully Jim will be on next week where I can get someone to really agree with reverse because that's very important. I feel like I'm over. I don't know why you think Jim's going to agree with you on reverse. Anyway, that's all, uh, I don't know why Jim's going to agree with you in reverse. <laughs> I don't know why Jim's going to agree with you. Jim, you're watching and planning. You better fucking agree with me. Jim's not watching. You never know. Anyway. Yeah. So with that, you're going to hear my dumb voice on this terrible video. I've been meeting to redo this one. <laughs> it's pretty terrible. <laughs> I did it in three minutes. So, but it's, it's fine. For, considering we've been doing this magazine for like eight years, and that's and, and that. You, and you know why time. I did this? And and this will make fun of Jeff again. Jeff is supposed to do this. Video <laughs> yes, I was. At least I four years ago. For, so, probably longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. So my three minutes and six years, or whatever the hell it was, uh, it's not the great. It's not. It's not what I'm proud of. But uh, why? Uh, why did you start this magazine with me? <laughs> I don't know because you said you would do all the work. Yeah. Hey guys, the show's over, but uh, let me explain what keeps this show going. It's not the terrible quality or the 38 cents. We're actually a magazine you download. And here's a quick video showing you how to do it. It's pretty simple. You get an email, click download. This is on an iPad, so the example's for an iPad, but it's pretty simple and same steps apply for every tablet. Just download it to your tablet, comes on there, make it a library, put it on your iBooks or whatever PDF viewer you like, and then you have full access to all our back issues with flippable pages, links that direct you to an ad if you are interested in the high-tech servo or the uh, new associated drag car. You just click their links and it brings you right to their website. It's just like a magazine, but on your phone. So you read it in the bathroom, just like good old times, but now it's digital. So remember to wipe your phone down because that's gross. Support us, subscribe, do whatever you need to do.
Yeah, we're still on. But that's it. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. More babble. Hopefully, in not an hour and four minutes of this. Because uh, I might have a new hat too tomorrow next week. Yeah. Buy one of his uh, skull bodies. I was going to say stupid ones, but skull <laughs> it body. was pretty stupid. Jeff could have 